Hello, this is Mr. Molo for lesson 9-9, the quadratic formula. All right, so this is pretty much the last thing in chapter 9, and hopefully it becomes the end all for finding those zeros. So we learned a couple different ways to do this. You could factor it out. You can set it equal to zero and do the math. You can graph it. You can complete the square. Um, some of those are better for different problems. This will work for all problems regardless of what it does. Um, kind of like graphing, except this is a lot faster and just has to do with the math. And you're going to be using this formula right here. This is something that probably your parents talk about, like, oh, yeah, I remember using the quadratic formula. So it's negative b plus and minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this plus or minus, that's where you would get your two answers. So you're going to do it, set it up twice, one with a plus sign, one with a minus sign. That's how you're going to get your two answers. Okay, so if I have something like this, so let's remember that formula was negative b. So in this case, it would be a negative 5. Let's do the plus 1 first. So plus b squared, which is going to be 25. Minus 4ac. So minus, so a negative 4 times 6, which is 24, times c, which is a negative 4. So negative 24 times 4 is a positive 96. Remember, this was square root. I should put that in earlier. Okay, all over 2 times a. And 2 times a, so 2 times 6, which is 12. Okay, and if I add these up, I get square root of 121, which is going to end up being 11. So I have negative 5 plus 11 over 12. So negative 5 plus 11 is 6. 6 over 12 is 1 half. So one of my answers that if I plug one half in for x would make this zero. Okay. The other way, remember, so now it's plus minus. Well, I don't need to plug everything in again. I'm just going to start from this step right here. Okay. And do negative 5 minus 11 over 12, which means I'm going to get negative 16 over 12, which we can simplify to negative 4 thirds. Okay, so remember, you're going to set it up. And pretty much the only thing that changes from problem to problem is that plus or minus. Let's move this blue box and see if we're right. And we are right. So 1 half is one answer. Negative 4 thirds is my other answer. Okay, so remember, you can pretty much solve the whole thing. And then you're just going to either add or subtract that part right there to solve the second equation. Okay. Some of you might be asking, well, sometimes we have problems where there's no solution. And sometimes we have problems where there's only one solution. Like we've all seen the different kinds of graphs that are right here. Well, this one's going to have two solutions. You're right. It crosses the x-axis at two points. This one's going to have one solution across the x-axis at one point. This one's going to have no solution. So how do we know which one's which? How do I even know if I need to plug it in for the second time? And you can use this formula to figure that out. Basically, it's just that square root formula. Okay, so if you get something that says b squared minus 4ac is bigger than 0, so in our case in that one problem, it was 121. 121 is bigger than 0 you're going to have two solutions. If you get something that equals zero, you're going to have zero solution, or one solution, sorry. And the reason for that is you can't have, it's not going to affect it. If I say plus zero minus zero, that's not going to change my answer. And if you have something that's less than zero, so like a negative, then it's going to have no solution to, because that graph is going to end up looking like this. So what I'm talking about is looking back at that one problem that we just did. If I would have gotten... 121 like I did here that means I know I'm going to have two solutions 
if I would have gotten something like zero, I know I'm only going to have one solution because me adding zero and me subtracting zero are going to have the same effect. So it's not going to change my one answer. And if it would have gotten something like a negative 121, well, I know that's not possible because you can't take the square root of a negative number. So then it would be something that's no solution. Okay, so this will work for 100% of problem. There's always an A, there's always a B, there's always a C. Even if it's lined up like something where there is no A, well, that means you just know A is 0, or A is 1, sorry, there's always an X squared. But if there's no B in the middle, then you know it's 0. If there's no C, then you know it's 0. Um, again, some of the questions that we've done before, like if it just says X squared equals 4, you don't have to do all this. If you know x squared equals 4, your two answers are 2 and negative 2. There's only one way to get x squared equals 4. So again, this is sometimes will not be the fastest way to do it, but this will guarantee work every time.